Alright guys, welcome back to the long-awaited episode 4. How to use December ingots. Let's jump right in. Today's objective is to find out who to realize for December. Who's worth booking? That's going to be one of the top questions. Number two is how many ingots to use for each unit. Should you book them only or should you invest three ingots? And what's the priority for December ingots? So be sure to look at your roles for a priority, but I'll give you my suggestions. Question is who to realize for December. Let's start off by looking at the overall cast. And we're going to have 12 EX plus weapons once again. This is the lineup. Uh, they come in pairs as usual. And overall the cast is very powerful. There are some standouts, not everybody is a standout, but most characters are usable. Starting off with uh, Lily Set and Kusha, how many ingots to use for each unit? Okay, starting off with Lily Set, what's changed? She gets a new EX weapon. Lily Set herself is a battery and aura support. She also gets debuffs on the enemies. But for me, my recommendation for her is just a 1 out of 3 because she's a support unit, so more attack and overflow doesn't really do much for her. So she's a simple investment, but very powerful nonetheless. Next up, we got Kuja. Kuja is an AoE damage dealer. He's a magical attacker. He also gives the party an attack aura with his EX buff. And for me, Kuja is a 3 out of 3 because he gets an HP plus upgrade and he gets more overflow and potency on his EX weapon. So that's going to help his longevity quite a bit. Moving on to Agrius. Agrius, in my opinion, is one of the standouts for this wave. Uh, she's a hybrid unit that can paralyze and silence enemies. And for me, Agrius is a 3 out of 3. If you guys remember, when she launched, her EX weapon had a very low potency, and this EX weapon at a full upgrade really helped her out in dealing the damage that she needs to do. Next up we got Ferris. So Ferris is a AoE dispeller and debuffer unit. She uses elements now. And for me, Ferris is also a 3 out of 3. This upgrades her HP plus into new HP plus plus. It also gives her a huge potency and overflow limit increase, so it helps her out quite a bit. We got a new unit coming up, it's Machina. And he's a physical melee DPS unit. He relies on using HP+. For me, Machina is also a 3 out of 3. And the reason for this is because he gets Brave Refund every time he uses the EX ability. So you want to do the most damage that you can in order to deal the output damage with his HP+, afterwards. And then we get Rem as a partner. Now Rem is a really strong support unit. She can provide your team turn manipulation. Uh, she can also give pretty good auras and batteries now with her rework coming up. For me, I recommend Rem at 3 out of 3. It is possible for you guys to use her at lower limit breaks because she is a support unit. But in my opinion, to get the most out of Rem, she gets more stats. She gets more battery. 30% um, battery with Max Brave for that limit break. So I think it's worth it in my opinion. Okay, next up we get a new unit. We get Lease. And Lise is just a melee damage dealer. She also gives party buffs as well, so she can support the party a little bit. For me, I rate Lise at 2 out of 3, because her 3 out of 3 upgrade, it does give a, a sizable overflow limit, it's 50%. However, her overflow limit is already really high at max chakra stacks, so in my opinion, it's not really worth it. Okay, next up we got Yishtola. Yishtola is a very strong support unit coming out. They can do everything pretty much heal, she can battery, she can revive characters. She also turn delays enemies with stone. And the big change with her EX plus is it doesn't take up a turn anymore, but you have to fully limit break it. So in my opinion, she's worth the three ingots. And then she gets a stronger HP plus attack as well. And she cannot die if you're over 50% HP. So she can tank some attacks and then heal your party back to full that way. Okay, next up we got Luck. Bak is a melee damage dealer. He's a physical damage dealer that can heal the party. For me, Locke is a 3 out of 3 limit break because he gets two brave and HP attacks executed two times, so it helps his damage output quite a bit. He also does some minor splash damage on the other enemies. And then we got Celeste. Celeste coming back with an upgrade to her old EX weapon. Celeste is a tank that absorbs single target magic attacks. She will require 3 out of 3 to be very effective. And the reason for this is because it does two separate HP attacks. It gets a huge potency increase. 
But the most important thing is you get a brave refund after using your EX ability. That comes with the 2 out of 3 limit break. So when you upgrade it all the way, you'll get a lot of refund and helps out her longevity. Hey, we got the last event character is Bosch. Now Bosch is a new tank. He absorbs AOE HP attacks for your whole party. And for me, Bosch is a 3 out of 3 because again, he gets two separate instances of HP attacks, which has been pretty common in this wave. And it helps out his output quite a bit. And the last character is going to be Vaughn. Now Vaughn, if you remember, is a magical attacker. He uses a bunch of elements. Now he's still the same. He can debuff enemies. Vaughn now requires a 3 out of 3 ingot upgrade as well because it upgrades his HP plus into more potency and it gets more damage on his EX weapon. So that's necessary for his longevity. Now, the moment everybody's been waiting for, the ingot priority. Again, I have a table set up for you guys, and we're going to start from the bottom tier and see who did I put down there. So it's going to be Machina and Lock. To me, I don't think their kits do enough, and they're kind of replaceable units in my opinion. Okay, next tier, we got neither best nor worst tier. It's pretty much everybody else. Yeah, we do have to stick them somewhere, but... These units are either niche or they're situational because they're locked to elements or they won't be that powerful in, in every situation so I had to put them here. Next time we got competitive choices and units. So up front here we got the two new tanks that can help your team for survivability. Also put Rem here, she's a very strong support option. She can give your team more turns to dish out the damage they need to do. And then lastly we got top picks. Now the top picks are going to be Agrius and Yishtola. They're very versatile, they're, they have very powerful kits, and they're going to help you guys quite a bit. Now I, I am going to put this image in the description below to help you guys, because I know a lot of people want to see the, the pictures been going around quite a bit, so I will set that up for you guys. And just to leave you guys with some parting words this time, so thank you all for all the amazing feedback. I had some great feedback on the first video I did for this and it got a lot of high praise. So that's why I gave you guys another video. The other thing is to check out the Crystal Chronicles podcast and the sites right here. You may find me on some episodes as well. They do great podcasts every uh, week for the show and they cover a bunch of things, everything about the game. And lastly, check out the Tom Berry Troops infographics. You can find the link here. They do infographics for every character coming up, reworks including EX weapons, so check them out. And that's it. I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.